Imagine a world where every purchase you make, every decision you take is silently guided by unseen forces. Sounds like a dystopian novel, doesn't it? But what if I told you that this isn't just fiction, but a reality we're all living in? Welcome to the world of consumerism. This socio-economic order encourages us to acquire goods and services in ever-increasing amounts. It's a concept that's deeply ingrained in our modern lives. But have you ever stopped to question it? The story doesn't end here, though. There's another player in this game, often overlooked yet immensely powerful, the government. Yes, the government plays a significant role in shaping consumerism. It can subtly guide our choices, leading us to think we're making independent decisions when we're actually being influenced by a larger agenda. But how can shopping habits and government control be linked? Let's delve into this a little deeper. Take a look at China's social credit system, a government initiative that's as innovative as it is controversial. It's a system that's been likened to a real-life Black Mirror episode where every citizen's behavior is meticulously monitored and scored. Imagine this, you're walking down the street minding your own business, your every action from obeying traffic rules to how you treat your neighbors is under surveillance. And it doesn't stop there. Even your consumer habits are scrutinized. Bought too many video games recently? That could lower your score. Donated to a charity? Your score just went up. This score, something as fluid and arbitrary as a number, can significantly affect your social standing. A high score could mean priority access to public services, faster internet, and better job prospects. On the other hand, a low score can limit your options, making something as simple as booking a flight or getting a loan harder than it should be. In essence, the social credit system is a clear example of how a government can use consumerism as a tool to control its citizens. By monitoring and scoring consumer habits, the government can influence behavior, molding citizens into what it deems as ideal. This system is a stark reminder of how consumerism can be manipulated to reward or punish citizens. On the other side of the world, we have a subtler yet equally impactful example, the American Sugar Lobby. This entity, largely unseen by the public eye, wields significant influence over the government's policymaking, specifically in the realm of agriculture. It's no secret that sugar is a lucrative commodity. But did you know that the American sugar lobby has been instrumental in shaping policies that favor its production? These policies have led to a surplus of sugar in the market and, correspondingly, a surge in its consumption by the American public. You may wonder, What's the harm in a little extra sweetness? Well, unfortunately, the health implications are far from sweet. Overconsumption of sugar has been linked to a myriad of health issues, including obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, imposing a significant burden on the healthcare system. But the reach of the American sugar lobby extends far beyond public health. It's a prime example of how the government's control over consumerism can have far-reaching effects on citizens' lives. By dictating what's available on the market and at what price, the government indirectly controls our choices, our health, and ultimately our freedom. In both these instances, the government's influence on consumerism has proved to be a powerful tool of control. So, what do these examples tell us about government control and consumerism? We've seen how consumerism, a seemingly simple act of purchasing, is often much more than meets the eye. In China, the government uses the social credit system to directly influence consumer behavior, rewarding those who comply with government-approved spending habits and punishing those who don't. On the other side of the globe, the American sugar lobby serves as an example of indirect control. Here, the government doesn't directly dictate what consumers should buy, but influences public consumption habits through policies, thereby benefiting select industries. Both instances depict the subtle ways in which governments can use consumerism as a tool of control. Consumerism is not just about shopping, it's a reflection of our society, and as we've seen, it can also be a method of control. So the next time you make a purchase, remember, it's not just about what you buy, but also about the forces that may be influencing your choices.